Hey folks, Johnson here. Okay, uh, to address the elephant in the room, two people said I had the fuel filter on backwards, and I do. I absolutely have it on backwards. Uh, not sure if I'm going to change it, how I'm, what I'm going to do, because I know if there's anything in it and you turn it around, it's going to get it out. But I do have another filter there. Uh, we'll figure it out. Mistakes happen. Uh, if that's the only one I ever done, I'd I'd be a lucky man. But uh, so did a little bit more playing with this thing and fifth gear at idle does really good and uh, you know we're still gonna do the governor and everything but I wanted to go ahead and explain a few things because I had a lot of questions about it and about uh, the edger and how it works and all that good stuff so here's what we got okay this is an early 1900s edger and this one was made in Michigan uh, Greenville Michigan actually but I can't remember the name, uh, Gordon Hollow Blast for Great Company is who made it. Okay, so it's self-feeding, it pulls through, this one drives and the other one drives, they just drive off the, the belt on that side. And, you know, there's no, you're not going to find an owner's manual for this, so it ain't like you're going to know what RPM it's actually supposed to run. And uh, it's got Babbitt bearings, uh, got to keep it old. And let me see. This board will move and you'll see the two blades. Now these blades have inserts in them. Uh, this blade is missing one insert. They're, they're not offset though. Uh, you know how you would have a you know one raked one way and the next one raked another way. They're not like that. They're straight and they're both opened up to the side, you know, out. That way you get your, your curve so it don't grab the actual blade. So I actually have one tooth on that side that's bent a little bit uh, not the actual insert but the blade we'll hammer it back uh, i got one tooth missing and i've got some extra an extra blade and some parts but uh, this thing i'm going to try to show you from the other end there is a lever right here now i re restocked the wood on this because it was rotted the only wood that i was able to keep and use was this piece and uh you know it was well there was some of it was missing and i am missing one roller and roller went back here i can make that i just haven't you know had a chance to do it yet and let me see uh I'll, this is a fence and i'll show you what that's for here in a minute so this blade or this operates from two inches well i guess you can go down to one inch but it would probably touch the hub each other, so it probably wouldn't go one inch. But you figure about a two inch board all the way up to a, uh, what, 18, 20, 2, 24, about a 24 inch uh, wide. Now it's actually made to do 27 inch wide, but with this setup, it'll only do 24, which I would never need it any farther than that. These boards that we edge the other day was about 16 and i use I, most of them were down to 15. so i'm going to explain to you why we do this and why i want to be able to do this so if i set a log up on a sawmill and i cut it then i've got to turn it i've got to cut it turn it cut it and then turn it and cut it to make it into a cant which is just a square you know the furniture square or a cant whatever you want to call it but uh and then you you know cut your boards off so with this setup i could actually just slice leave the bark on the sides uh take it off and the reason i would do that is because a fan mill is slower than like a circle mill so i'll show you my circle mill here in a little bit uh is a part but i'll show you what i've got uh the thing about it is is a a band mill will do a thousand foot a day where a circle mill will do a thousand foot an hour. So when it comes to production, you know, these band mills are nice. They're really nice for, for the really wide boards when you're trying to cut live edge and stuff like that. But when you're into production, you know, you get more saw curve out of it, but it, it's so much faster that it makes up for it. But if I was doing it with the, the regular mill and I wanted to be in a hurry, that would be one thing. I'd just saw, turn, saw, be done because it don't take long. With a band mill, because it takes so much longer each trip, and uh, you know you're wearing a blade out every time you, you're cutting, I'm just slicing, leaving the bark on, cutting everything live edge, and then come over here 
and take and set the blade up where I want and saw it. And that way everything would be a live edge board. This is a live edge board. I know I cut a piece out of this. Actually the piece that I cut out of this is this piece. Uh, so I used the, the uh, skill saw to cut basically a four inch board out of it and that's what that was. But you know if I'd have had the edges on I could have just ran it through and there's my four inch board. Now there's a little bit of warping on this one because it's been laying out here in the rain but it's okay this one we're going to use to run through it. So when you move this back and forth it moves one blade, this blade. This one's stationary, this one moves. So, you know, it's just moving it together and apart. So I'm about a sixteenth off right now on, on size. So if I go down to four inches on this, which is right down, let me move it here. Kind of hard to, hard to move, but easy but hard. Okay, there it is. So I'm at four inches, that's the four, and there's the line. So I'm about a sixteenth of an inch off. Now all I need to do is loosen up the bolts here and slide this, and that's how you make your adjustment, you know, so everything's right. But I'm, 16th I'm not even worried about. You know, we're, we're doing rough cut lumber here. We're not planing. The big difference between a planer and a sawmill. So, okay, I've got this fence kicked out. The reason I have it kicked out is that sometimes you have a board that has live edge only on one side so you can run this on one side set your blade up and cut and it'll be you know a good straight board or you can just move this over like such and adjust both your blades or adjust your blade to where you can run it through both blades so like i said this one's about 100 years old or somewhere somewhere near uh i'll show you another one i've got that's set up a little different Okay, this is another old one, and I've got uh, drag chains for for actually uh, sawdust on them, laying on it. But I mean, that's not part of it. But this is basically the same exact thing as what I just showed you. The difference on this one is this was made in Salem, North Carolina. Well, Salem, I think Winston Salem and Salem came together in 1912 or 13, so something like that. But that makes it pre uh, 1912, 13. Uh, J.A. Vance Company, they made sawmills also. So somebody has got four blades on this. And if you look, they're about an inch apart. So they're actually made for cutting tobacco sticks. And which I really need something to cut, you know, to cut them because uh, it'd be nice to be able to do stickers to go in between the, the wood when you stack it. So, and I'm not trying to get into production. I'm just playing, you know, because I enjoy doing it. And it's always nice to be able to you know knock out some of that bucket list stuff that you enjoy doing so we may may or may not get that one set up this is a swing saw this actually mounts in the rafters and hangs down and this is the handle for it and when you take your wood off of your uh your sawmill and you're rolling it down on the conveyor uh if it's a slab you can use this to cut it into firewood length throw it over toward the boiler and set back you know burn it and use it for fuel on the slabs and you don't have slabs that are stacking up and laying around uh made in dunn north carolina the john mckay manufacturing company so this is you know 100 years old at least too so one belt goes from the smaller pulley down to here which i was got a chip out of it wouldn't matter uh and the bigger one you know goes to your line shaft and runs so i've got two of these different brands and here's my double watt frick mill uh, got a 58 inch blade for this which is a really big blade and I've actually got video of this thing running uh, sawing wood in the 1950s and the guy I got it from which is actually a subscriber uh, I bought it from him uh, probably a few months ago and I had to go up to Virginia and take it apart take it down it took us about five hours to get it and get it on you know out from under the, the roof it was under and get it loaded and uh, so we got the track and we've got, uh, that's the carriage. And if you look, it's got the bearings underneath instead of the caps. So that dates it really early. Projects I'm working on right now is a building to put the power unit and the edger and the sawmill in. So I've just about got it ready. I got a couple stumps to dig up and then I can start 
Uh, I don't know whether I'm going to use telephone poles or I've got some steel poles, but I'm going to do one or the other. I've got both, and uh, we're going to go ahead and get to work on that. I've got some rafters for it. i got tin for it. I will have to cut some wood for it, but everything else is ready. So we're just going to build that to get all the stuff in the dry. So here's the blade, and like I said, it's 58-inch blade, so it's, it's huge. You figure these are six-foot forks, and it's take it up a lot of it so. uh, and it also has inserts and the inserts look the same as the uh, inserts on the edger I'm not sure that they are but good possibility that it's the same same ones but we're hoping we can get by and use this blade uh, you know we took it off so it was you know it hadn't been sitting around anywhere besides underneath that shed on the on the uh, husk frame so. all right okay folks winds blowing but I'm gonna go ahead and start this up and we're going to do, like I said, we're going to do a four inch board and uh, make this, which is basically not very usable, into just a four inch board. take one that's got a one edge straight and this is a piece that I edged off so we're really you know getting out of the bottom of the barrel here but we're gonna see if we can run it through and uh, make a small board all right let's shut down So until I get the clutch hooked up, I'm at least going to knock it in neutral before I shut it off. Because there's a lot of momentum, you know, going on with the belt and the, you know, the weight of the blades and the weight of everything here. So. Okay, so basically what we've done is we took a board that was edged off of another board, but it was unusable. And now you can see it actually would be a usable board. I mean, I don't know what you'd want it for, but... Uh, you know, it's a, about a one by, I guess we probably went one by inch and a quarter. So I wouldn't need to do that to use these for stickers between the boards, but really the narrower you get, the better off you are anyway. You know, when you get a wider board, it's not going to let the air get, you know, as much in. You don't want real wide boards when you're stacking them like that. So anyway, and then we got our, uh, our one by four and, uh, so basically, you know, you're, you're saving lumber and, uh, you know, a lot of the stuff that you would normally just throw away uh, or not worry as much about because you've, uh, you're trying to uh, cut a certain size board. And uh, if you end up with some live edge stuff, which you usually do at least two pieces or so, uh, if you do end up with it, then you can always run it through here and, you know, make whatever size you want. So this is a... It's just another tool in the toolbox and uh, seems to work pretty good. I've definitely got to get that blade fixed. That's why that you'll see we, well, it's got one decent edge and then one really rough edge. That rough edge is because we got one tooth that is uh, acting stupid. So we're going to uh, modify it with a hammer here when we get time and, uh, you know, try to find, you know, find out about the inserts. We need to replace a couple at least. And, uh, get a way of sharpening them. I don't have a way yet, but you can see we've done we've done a little bit uh, I'll tell you a little story about a friend of mine Cornell Cameron. He's 
he passed away at uh, age 96, I believe. Uh, so, and this has been years ago, but I was friends with him for years and years before that. And uh, he was a sawmill man. I mean, that's all he had ever done. And he'd made furniture squares and, and sent them off to uh, High Point to make furniture. And sometimes he actually hauled with his own, you know, his own truck. And I went over one time real quick, but uh, let me get off subject here. One of them squirrel situations. But went over one time and he had his grandson spinning a tire on the front of an old cab over. And he was using a chainsaw to cut a new groove in it. So to tell you what kind of person he was. But uh, over the years, he told me that he had two deaths at his sawmills. And uh, one, uh, there was a father and son. The father was actually sawing and the son had a glove and was playing around acting stupid and the glove caught the blade and drug him in and when it drug him in it cut him in half and his dad was the sawyer so you know I, I that would I don't even know what I would do in that situation I mean I'd hate to even, I don't even want to think about it really but uh, he had told me that story and he had told me another story about an edger uh, a lot of these edgers you see this sawdust well they you know you're edging so much you need a way of getting that away now if we was running a, a boiler we'd just reburn that no problem but uh, we've got to get it out of there but you can use a chain like uh, the chain that was laying on top of the other edger or you can use a blower and a lot of them had blowers right below it and would actually run off these you know off the same machine and uh, it had a metal tray under it for it all to fall into and you know shoot out so guy didn't shut the machine off and he had a stick that came from the edger probably not much different than this stick here and he decided that he was going to poke around down there and try to get that uh get it unstuck where that you know the bigger chunks as you can see and stuff will clog it up and when he did it shot the stick and it come back and went directly through his heart and killed him so uh you know you you've got to be careful around this stuff and i know you, you know you all see me walking around the belt and stuff like that you know the belt's only dangerous is if if it was to grab a hold of you or if it wrapped up in something was was throwing if it comes off it just comes off it, it's going to come off and hit the ground and uh, it's not going to slap anybody or nothing like that it loses its energy so fast it's you know it's unbelievable and uh but you know just knowing what you can and can't do and trying not to do anything that, that's too stupid that's going to hurt you but the uh but i did you know when i was doing some research for steam engine stuff i decided to look up uh sawmill deaths or you know deaths that happened in uh in the 50s and stuff and i think it was like 1954 i found the newspaper article on the guy that uh actually sawed his son in half so that was pretty terrible and you know older newspapers especially if you get back into the early uh the teens and the 20s they were really graphic about what happened you know it's like uh, i was reading about a boiler explosion in south carolina and they talked about the boiler exploded and it blew the guys 75 feet and ripped some of their limbs off uh, tore their clothes off and scalded them and then uh you know of course they all passed away and they'd never found the steam dome and they said the reason was is they put lighter stump in it but now lighter stump will burn fast but no matter what you burn in it you should have enough pressure relief you know to stop that thing you know the the low water is what the problem is you know matter of fact i just uh got out of school today and uh finally uh went through that and got that all done and took a test today and i did miss one question on it so yeah, 52 questions I think and I didn't even I don't not even sure which one I missed I never got to see it yet but anyway uh, I hate I missed one but I'm not gonna beat myself up too bad over it and uh, we got a four-sided planer that uh, we're gonna get under that shed all and uh, start getting cleaned up this is uh, uh, nothing's really stuck on it it actually is in a lot better shape than what it looks uh, I don't know what it weighs but the yellow 8,000 pound forklift won't pick it up so it's pretty heavy uh, made in Greensboro it's a Newman and it is a four-sided planer that will plane all four sides but it will also plane tongue and groove and it'll do shiplap siding so we're gonna eventually get that hooked up now uh, you know the ultimate thing would be to run this stuff on steam eventually but you know, we'll see what happens uh, you know, I got to live long enough for all that. So, 
but uh, we're not giving up either way. No matter how crazy that uh, people think we are, we're still not going to give up. All right. Appreciate everybody watching. Till next time. Bye.